It could just be early for the next meeting, you know? Oh, is that what it is? That's exactly how it works. All After right. Well, we're here. I mean, that's what's important. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone doing all right? Hanging in there. Great. Another another week closer to uh, fall. Yeah. I mean, look, I don't know. I know uh, the middle section of our country right now is kind of baking. Um, yeah. But but the weather here is baking down here, too. Is 80 degrees today. Like no humidity, sunny, 80. It's like a fall day. Right, um, right. It's kind of crazy. Yep. We are the reboot. Today we're going to talk about uh, some IT services your IT company should be providing. And we're, kind of, we're not going to get too, I mean, we're going to get specific with some of the topics, but just kind of an overall understanding on um, what you should be looking for and, and what should be covered. Because uh, we come across a lot of times um, some of our prospects that we talk to are getting half of the services that we're including in our contracts, which obviously there's going to be some pricing differences, but also you want to make sure that you have uh, your, your clients and prospects best interests in there. Um, before we get started, I am Brian Bratch with BNL PC Solutions. I'm based out of Long Island, New York. And to my left or right is? <laughs> to your left is David Lock. There you go. <laughs> LDD Consulting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. And my name is Dave Groot, and I'm with Windstar Technologies in Culpeper, Virginia. And Brandon Bowers with BPB Managed Cyber Solutions out of sunny South Florida. Nice. Um, all right, guys. So I, I think what we're what we're seeing today is is um, there's either uh, a lot of all encompassing contracts that that cover everything, or some people still allow you to kind of cherry pick on the service side of things. Um, and I still know some some companies out there that that just do like direct IT support, um, kind of ad hoc on a, you know, time block basis. Hmm. Uh, even for, people on yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're, they're doing that and it, and it fits their model or their business need. But I think as, as we're seeing some of these these changes evolve in technology, uh, it, it's important to take a look at um, making sure that that all of your stuff is is covered from uh, just from a business standpoint, and um, all your intellectual prop intellectual property is is protected, uh, and things are being done the right way as things change. And 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 maybe something you were doing five years ago or even a year ago isn't uh, done to you know best practices today. Um, you know, one of the easy things I, th I think that that we are able to provide um, is is training for people uh, because that that for us is a big, um, you know, that, uh, as we know, that's a potential uh, entry into your network for malware viruses, stuff like that. So providing that level of training. And we have some clients that go through some high-end uh, in-person training with a third party um, and they get their uh, high-end phishing test done twice a year. And we introduced them to our platform about a month ago uh, and they were at a under a 3% fish rate um, for the last three years, we sent them a campaign. We're not even done with two months yet, and we have a 40% fish rate. So thinking that, th you know, something is being done. And checking something it, probably wasn't even working. It's, <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the metrics were good there, but, but I mean, you know, I mean, so, so some of the fishing that we were doing was um, to get people to read how ridiculous something was, like like a, a glass door review of the company they worked for. And one of it was like, you know, my boss wouldn't let me wear slippers to the office. So they clicked because they wanted to read what other stuff was there. But you're still fished because it's, it's and that's the goal here is to keep that, that education going, you know. Um, and then I know companies that don't do, I was telling the guys before, that don't do any, any hardware repair. And, um, you know, for us, that's, uh, you know, if something isn't powering up or, or, you know, a drive dies or you need RAM, and, you know, um, is that level of service provided or do you just have to go out and buy a new computer um, and, and, you know, stuff like that. Um, asset uh, yeah. License management, all that stuff. You know, we can, we can go around the room and just talk about different things, but um, it's really important to know that, that I know clients that were doing Azure AD multi-factor, but weren't licensed for it you know, and, and they assume that they were good with that because it worked, right? It worked. So we could do it. And well, just because you could do it doesn't mean that you're licensed properly. So um, that's also something that we do is, is the, is the license uh, and asset management. Um, 
you know, uh, it, one of the things that um, domain name renewal, SSL renewal, stuff like that, is that stuff that, that you're being notified of uh, it's due to renew. Um, we've had, we've had people call us, uh, cold call us and just say that they're not getting email or website. Can we help? And we'd like, well, we do a quick look and yeah, you're, you're not, <laughs> you're not, uh, renewed, you're expired. And, um, so, you know, kind of there's layers involved here, but, um, how deep do you want to go? And, that, and that's just kind of like, we want to, our goal is to handle as much as we can it, but be specific on what we don't handle. We don't do any application development. We don't support third party applications. Um, we'll work with your vendors to do that, but you know, how much is your, is the company that's supporting you capable of doing and what are they contracted to do? Yeah. I mean, good. No, I, I, I was just going to try and take a step back for a second. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, a, I think a lot of times people think, all of the providers are providing the same thing and it it's not also clear um or it's not clear to a client on what is really being included um things like cybersecurity and compliance i feel nowadays clients believe that that's part of it when it's it's really not it's it's a whole beast of its own and there's a lot of time and complexity involved in those things and so um it's one thing if we're just talking about you know it provider and it support and that's already complicated to compare because one provider is including on site one provider isn't one provider is including an antivirus one provider is including an edr and there's all these different things i you know i i tell prospects friends, uh, other business owners I know, like when they're looking, even if they're not looking to work with us, you know, let us help with the evaluation in terms of at least educating them on, you know, it's not apples to apples what they're looking at on every contract. And let's just make sure that at least the base level protections are in place. And um, again, just IT support for a second, because I, I think compliance and some of the cyber security stuff, we should maybe also talk about some in terms mm -hmm. of like considerations and what's in, what is included. But I think as part of any IT package, like you got to have a, a team of individuals that's going to support you when you need it. Like help desk is just the base. And if, I don't know, to me, if they're not going to repair something that's broken, then I don't know if I if I was a business owner, if I'd be working yeah. with that client or uh, with that vendor. That that sounds just kind of weird to me. But then you know, looking over the general, um, you know, I say align with CIS critical eighteen controls or but but some sort of framework and say, hey, you know, do we have a firewall in place? Are we enabling Active Directory? Are they going to help us with these things? Do they have an antivirus that, we're, like, make sure all the layers are in place, and then that's what we can compare and and do a baseline against when we're looking at different vendors outside of SLA and response time and, you know, other metrics like that, that you might want to talk about or evaluate when you're trying to make a decision like that and how they price things and is it per seed and which maybe that's something we want to talk about too, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit later. But, um, yeah, I, I think taking a step back and understanding what's in, what is really included and then, um, evaluating that is really where you need to start. You definitely need to understand what it is that you're getting, right? Yeah. Because the assumption part of it is where the danger lies. What, and, and what you're not getting. <laughs> well, that, okay, yeah. maybe yeah. that's the more important part. But, <laughs> but, but that conversation needs to be had because not everybody does everything the same. Um, and, and there's no requirement on any regulated, you know, body's part for any tech person or provider to do anything the same, right? right. <clears throat> and so, yeah, you know, make sure they're meeting with you quarterly, make sure they're going over business strategies and they're identifying places where you could potentially save money or be more efficient or be more secure or, you know, all the things there that are, are important, right, to the existence of the business. I, I was listening to a podcast yesterday, actually, and they were talking about um, pricing and it was it wasn't selling IT services, but it was just it was about sales and something that should like 
come up in someone's head when you're looking at price, um, especially if there's a large difference in price, it shouldn't just indicate, well, oh, hey, these are two of the exact same services <laughs> and just one is cheaper. A lot of times the general cost to support an environment is going to be generally the same. You know, hey, maybe within a, a margin of a few percentage, just like when you buy a computer from Best Buy versus Dell.com or something, right? Yes. Yeah, pricing will be a little bit different, but a Dell is a Dell wherever you get it. Um, when it comes with IT providers, there's processes and other things in place which change how you might support. <clears throat> there's also the level and quality of the staff that they have that's a cost factor in the tools that they're using. Um, but like, hey, yeah, there's going to be a, a s small percentage of difference. But if there's a very large percentage, there's likely a major factor or change in what's being provided. And that should be a trigger, not to necessarily say like, oh, these guys are too expensive. But like, why is that? the Oh, well, they're including all of our Office 365 licenses or they're including cloud infrastructure that the other's not doing. And a lot of times I feel providers don't do a good job maybe educating um, or describing that. But then, um, you know, a prospect signs up with the low cost, you know, quote unquote, low cost provider. And, you know, they're getting either low cost service or they're getting surprised with a number of licenses or things right. that they didn't realize yeah. they were going to have to purchase. Yeah. yeah. And the service is not, you know, not acceptable. It's, you know, slow response, the whole number. That's another factor. Yeah, um, it's 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 if you if you're doing work to your house and you have two contractors come by and they're giving you you know you're looking at your pricing. Well, this guy's using you know a, a better vinyl or better windows or whatever. You can you can see those things, but when you go to a you know a car dealer and you're looking at I want this model car and they're they're a huge difference in price. Well, then you know that this guy's ripping you off. You know, um, <laughs> <clears throat> so um, I like to do. Uh, if, if we're bundling services together, you know, we'll put our pricing, uh, you know, out there, but also list everything that we're including in there. Um, so we're including your, you know, your, your DNS filtering, we're including your, your cloud backup, we're, in, you know, all this stuff is all, there's not, nothing, nothing that you're not, that, that we're doing that you're not going to see on this invoice. Maybe there's no dollar amount tied directly to it because we're bundling it in there, but I feel it's important to do that. And, and that makes it easy for us too, looking at, you know, if we're looking at a prospect, well, what are you paying? They give us an invoice with, with nothing on it, with just a number. Well, what are they giving you? And they, they don't know the value. They have no idea what they're getting. So, you know, how do, how do you, for us, it's, it's hard to, you know, you know, kind of compete with something that we don't know what service you're getting. Definitely challenging to, to kind of, you know, look at it like that. Well, I mean, that can tie into all kinds of things, right? Making sure your, your invoice is, is correct. Your Microsoft licensing is correct. That you're actually getting all the things that are being charged, um, you know those types of things. Yeah, and well, we use that as an entry point also, or or dis not an entry point, a discussion point is, well, what are you paying for? Doesn't isn't that important to you to 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 have that at least broken down and, and have an idea so that we can have these conversations and 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 know what we're talking about here? Um, too many times I hear, I have no idea, I don't know, you know, and and um, it's it's unfortunate, but I mean, ideally, yeah, I mean, you you love. You'd love to have um, maybe you know a, a back end sock tied in and, and have EDR and have you know and I have you know people we talk to well, we use you know um, we're just using you know web root and and no mail filtering it's like okay well then that's you know we don't do that this is you know we go we go a different direction we have a different stack that we use or whatever it is mm -hmm. um, it's just and, and we're and I'm talking to decision makers right the, and the people that are paying the bills they they just clueless and and um, to, to be open and, and have these conversations is important and, and somewhat eye-opening because um, with with them not knowing, uh, you know, and, and us looking at a number, it's, it's it's really hard to determine. They don't even know who's paying their licensing or, or what they even have. And it's... it's Well, it makes offboarding pretty difficult as well. 100%. You know, we give we have a full, obviously a full onboarding checklist and, and information that we require. And they're like, you know... Um, I mean, I'm sure some of the, you know, some of that's by design. Like they want to make it hard to, to leave or, you know. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say in terms of uh, whether it's an existing client or a prospect looking for services like this. Check your phone, Brandon, to your connection. My connection's there bad. You go. Nope. Oh, oh, okay, sorry about that. Nope, it just went off um, again. Really? 
Yeah, it's... you're back into a can. It's like oh, when you okay. moved your head. There you there go. You go. There you better. All right, I'm not going to move. Oh. <laughs> no, you did, though. <laughs> now I'm not going to move. It works now or no? No. Just no? back. Okay. Never mind. I'm muting myself. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear you. Just get it got very dimmy. Um, right. So, David, do you offer different loft? Do you do different packages? Like, well, I know, you know, if you're specific to a vertical, uh, and there's a, a, a stack for that vertical, but you offer different um, packages for different uh, clients or prospects? Yeah, we'll, we'll add advanced security for ones that are in compliance into our core uh, agreement. Mm -hmm. But um, for the most part, it's pretty much the same for everybody now. Yeah, and that's kind of what we've been doing is, is we have our our um, security stack that we put out there, and and that's that's not even the go. It's it's a few line items in the, in the um, in the proposal, but it's not negotiable. It's it's like this is right. this is what what we're going to provide to protect you. And then and then um, David Groot, you know, with all the compliance stuff and all the you know that that could be a separate you know conversation too, because if someone says. Um, uh, we're, we're you know registered with the sec or we have to maintain this compliance and it's like okay well well you know where are you now because we, we don't know right we don't know the, the state that they're in right. so what is it going to take you know on our end to maintain that compliance right hipaa whatever it is and well, things that that even bounce around right. like microsoft licenses we don't include that in the core contract <laughs> because that's all over the place yeah right yeah. Well, I mean, there's also like, you know, cyber insurance reviews and making sure you're meeting the requirements of that. And, you know, uh, just a half a dozen other platforms that you want to be reviewing, even vendor contracts, um, all that stuff. Right? Can you guys hear me now? Yep. Much better. Yeah, I was just going to, I'll add to David and I'm going to go back to what I was going to say, but, you know, contract reviews, cyber insurance, like these things are also not typically included in most IT providers packages. Yeah. So there's a lot of process that goes into due diligence over a vendor, vendor assessments that um, I think may be a surprise to some um, when they get a bill and you know should be a consideration or something that they understand and realize. The other thing I was gonna, I was trying to go back to is for any anybody looking for a provider things they may want to consider in their contract, I think could be something good that we could add some value. Um, at least a selling point to us when I'm, <laughs> when I'm, when I'm out there, Hey, <clears throat> are they requiring you to do a long-term commitment or when there's onboarding or offboarding, what do you need to evaluate on your co contractual obligations? Like, is there a, a notice period? I think these are things that are very important to look at before you, sign on the final data line is there an out after you onboard is there any satisfaction guarantee over the first 30 or 90 days um is there any sla on the like day-to-day -day support or if they don't respond in a week is that acceptable and you have to still stay within contract and you're locked in for you know three years these are some things that maybe you should consider i don't know if you guys have any other uh recommendations for people looking for stuff like that like I, mean, I agree that that um, you know so we all of our contracts are, are you know we write them for a year but but they're month to month and and um, good bad or indifferent I mean that that's how I've done it for years and um, it it just resonates well with with a prospect that you can opt out you know we ask for thirty days and and that's you know um, something that they feel that they have that and and again if you're providing what you're providing and and you're you're you know sharing your your you know your reviews yeah. with them and references and 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 your, your quality of services exactly where where it, you say it is then there's nothing you know there's nothing that no reason for them to kind of use that as uh, any type of leverage because it's you can get out at any time um but uh, th there's a lot some of these contracts that i've seen are anywhere from four pages to you know over 100 on some of these contracts and that's a lot. I mean, that's something. So, so they, there's an investment on their end to, you know, legally have have an attorney at least look at it. And and I did have an insurance company that came back and had wanted me to change some verbiage in in, in my contract that I've had for God knows how many years. Um, but we we did. I went to my attorney and we we did um, change what he wanted. It was it was really uh, nominal to us. Uh, but but 
it, it was nice to know that actually someone is taking the time and, and, and reading that because it is, you know, um, uh, it's a binding agreement you, you have with these uh, with these customers. So um, you want to make sure that they're, uh, you know, you're meeting their expectations and you're doing what, what you, you say you're going to be doing within the, the, um, uh, the confines of the, of the contract. Right. We all do. Um, so I have a separate contract that we do for um, uh, our sock services, right? Because that's a different agreement, but it's, it's you know, uh, there's different terms on that. So I have a separate contract for that. That's just a simple one page contract with terms on it, really. Um, and uh, so some clients have have two contracts. But uh, I, I think something else that, um, that that we see is is people a lot of prospects that we talk to and, and new clients that we, we've taken on don't have any type of backup on their cloud services um, because they're told that that's, you know, they're, they're already um, backed up or, or, you know, the clusters are redundant and they don't need that, you know. Um, but Office 365 and Google Workplace don't need backups, do they? <laughs> they're doing that. And I heard firewalls aren't a thing anymore either. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah, you heard that. <laughs> So um, yeah, there's there's a lot of and and, and we are we, we do a decent amount of uh, VoIP for our clients, um, uh, and 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 for us it's just we do an assessment, a site assessment, make sure that the network is uh, you know at, at stable enough to handle the additional VoIP traffic, and we get involved and we handle that as well. We don't bill for it, so it's not in our in our um, contract, but uh, we provide those services as well. We try to you know touch anything IT that we can. Um, and incorporate that, you know, in, into our services. But, but like I said, there's some things that we just, we, we don't do. We don't provide any type of application development or, or programming or anything like that. Um, or web, we don't do web, web development. Some guys do. I don't know if you guys do web design or web hosting or anything like that. We, we do some. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what about like having the mask about insurance? I, I feel like that's important. Hey, if, Absolutely. I'm, I'm telling my clients to make sure they've got like cyber policies in place. And if you're talking to an IT provider, make sure they've got tech, you know, and yeah. cyber policy in place as well, because I mean, if they're not protecting their house and doing some of this stuff, then um, I don't think they should be qualified to protect you either. <laughs> well, to what David said before is in that, or maybe it was you, Brandon, but, but, you know, you can have, you know, five level one texts to my two level two texts and we'll blow you out of the water because you know we're going to get stuff done uh more efficiently um and and w without without the the hand holding that's needed so uh but uh, you know that's staffing costs right so how much are you investing in your uh in your support staff um and along those lines you your insurance for these your, your staff and your business um is is i mean we, we pay a lot for insurance <laughs> we hold a lot of insurance we have to we carry a lot and and um we we do kind of tout that in our proposals we you know make sure that that your current company is is you know adequately insured and and ask for proof if if needed but you know um you don't want to get burned by that because you know you can go ahead and sue them all you want if something happens but um chances are uh you, you're not going to get very far with that if they don't, they don't have the insurance so uh, anything you want to end with anything specific i think we gave some pretty good tips yeah. i mean my biggest thing is just realize cybersecurity and compliance are a totally different animal and um not, a, not an it that. role right <clears throat> huh? it's not an it role yeah right, right. uh yeah. you know Compliance and security is often mixed with IT because in a day we used to have antivirus and firewalls and now we don't need antivirus or firewalls. So we don't use IT anymore for security or compliance. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <clears throat> but but that's where the IT idea comes from, right? I'm sure like because yeah. you know, those are some of the most common controls and that does fall in the lane of the IT department. I mean, the biggest piece would be to make sure you're actually reading the contract or like Brian said, have somebody review it. Yeah. so that you know and then also outline all of the services that are provided so you don't have to read a 40-page contract to figure it out from the different providers you're you know evaluating yeah and we have changed our contracts over the years as 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 things have changed we've we've made some changes uh, some additions taken some stuff out um but you know we're, we're doing what we can and we're not listen nothing is is um 
you know, when it comes to, to pricing, I mean, you want to sit down and, and take your your top three based on, I mean, you can't look at, at pricing alone because there, there could be the cheapest guy out there that um, doesn't, you know, doesn't have very, you know, his, his customers aren't happy. I mean, I, reference checks are very important. We send out reference checks with every proposal. We write them right on there. Whether or not they check or not, that's that's on them. But but depending on the the vertical that we're pitching to, we we, we give them uh, three or four references for that vertical that, that, that we've worked in for the last, you know, number of years. So that's important too. But if you're paying more, you should be getting way better service than the cheap ones. And that's the difference. Or having a lot more protection, your risks, is, oh, yeah. your risk is reduced, hopefully. I mean, yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. I just. Yep. Yeah. All right, guys. Funny. Yeah. Thank you. And we will uh, chat again next week. Perfect. Yeah. See Bye. you guys. Take care. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good one.